Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. David Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new teen therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. David is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. <laughs> Hi, David, and welcome everyone to episode 210. And we have a really special guest, another special guest with us today, Jacob Towery. David, can you tell us something about Jacob? Yes, I sure. I could tell you a lot about Jacob, but I'll just uh, <laughs> tell you a little bit and suppress a few of the ju juicier, more fantastic uh, details. But uh, I'm just so proud to have you on our show today, Jacob. Jacob was uh, started as uh, one of my psychiatric uh, resident students at Stanford. Uh, in fact, that that he was just born that way. He just was born as my, 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 my <laughs> resident student. <laughs> no, we, that's where we met. We spent a, a year in supervision, which was a, joy, a joyous year. And you, Jacob, started coming also to the Tuesday group, uh, the team therapy training group. You, you must have, do you remember what, what year that was when, when we... Uh, 2007. 2007. And so huh? the group was a good 10, eight or nine years old at, at that point. And then you've been in it ever since. You, I, I would say that you're a, a brilliant clinician and teacher as well. You help help us teach, help teach with, the, with us in the Tuesday class at Stanford. You're in a clinical practice. You're uh, one of the superbly brilliant uh, clinicians, team uh, clinicians. You have many specialties. One, one of them is treating people with social anxiety, anxiety, panic attacks. Uh, I, I would say on a personal level, we all have our strengths and weaknesses and some people have special genius. I would say you're the greatest shame attacking exercise expert in the world, uh, <laughs> bar, bar none. Uh, and uh, we don't won't go into that in tremendous de detail, but that, that's one of the techniques we use for treating people with uh, shyness and social anxiety, which is our our focus to today. Uh, but we we do bizarre things in public to make fools of ourselves to get over the fear of looking foolish. And uh, I mean, I've I've often talked about on podcasts and, 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 and lectures and workshops about when we went over to the Stanford Mall one year to do our annual <laughs> shame attacking exercises. That's where therapists have to do what you're gonna ask your patients to do. And I remember I had to go into Victoria's Secret and ask for a bra in my size. <laughs> it was very humiliating. But I, I, I went in and I asked this woman, she said, I think you should go to the Macy's men's department. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'll go there right now. And I got out of there. She said, they didn't have a bra in my size. <laughs> and when we went in there, uh, Jacob suddenly came waltzing up See, we all had to do these shame attacking exercises. And you, Jacob, came up to the cash register. You had picked up this topless mannequin. It was just a mannequin from the waist down with these <laughs> fancy Levi's styrofoam. And you were you had your arms around it like like you were in love. And you told the person at the cash register, I, I think I'm in love. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 you've got to sell me this this, this mannequin. I can't go home without her. But I've only got twenty one dollars, and you, you've got to throw in the the jeans as well. <laughs> and it was the, the wildest the wildest thing ever. And we're, but we're just so so happy to have you, uh, Jacob. Um, uh, let, let's see, why don't we start out with uh, that, that beautiful endorsement that we received from Kai, one of the most beautiful ever. And then we've received a, an email and also some negative thoughts from, from a wonderful but sad fellow named David, who's so shy that he's never had 
he's never had a, a date. Uh, and I think he doesn't even know how to talk to women. And he, he needs a lot of your special genius and expertise. So uh, we'll, uh, Rhonda will also read his, his letter, but start with this beautiful thing from Kai. Okay. So Kai was writing us about episode 187, which was the awesome Atlanta team therapy demo that David, you did with your patient, Michael, patient um, therapist who was in the Atlanta intensive and Tyann, who was your co-therapist for the work. And Kai wrote, this podcast episode 187 helped me truly change my life. I thought I had things figured out before, but man, the work you three did that day crystallized my own social anxiety issues and gave me the courage to finally do some hefty self-disclosure. I was in tears throughout the podcast and well after, even waking up in the middle of the night crying, knowing that I had to do the exact same thing that Michael had done. So I finally told all the people I knew on social media that I struggled with social anxiety and that my deepest fear was my negative feelings and conveniencing people, hurting them and showing how I was being selfish by taking the spotlight. I also told everyone how all these fears led to a lifetime of loneliness, rejection, and helplessness. I cried writing it all out because it finally felt like I was letting all of that go for the first time in my life. The responses I received from so many on social media, including people I hadn't heard from in years, was astonishing and so supportive. My social anxiety was completely shattered. Now I see the truth that our feelings are an expression of our humanity and the most honest, loving thing to do is to share them with people. I'd be damned if I'm going to tell myself anymore that my negative thoughts inconvenience or hurt people. Screw whether I'm being selfish. I finally understand what you mean, David, that the problem was never that I've had, that I have been inconveniencing hurtful or selfish. It's that I'm telling myself that these things about me are wrong and that I shouldn't be that way. I share my feelings all the time now. The constant feelings of nervousness, unease, OCD, and panic attacks that I've had before are gone 99% of my days. I feel more human and more myself now than I have felt for the last 20 years. You should call it relearning how to be human therapy. God bless you, David, Ty Ann, and of course, yourself, Michael. I'm truly in your debt. You're my own personal hero, and I wish I was there at the intensive to give you a big hug. I'm grateful, honored, overjoyed, and just so happy for the help you've all brought me. It's making me tearful again. I love the work you've done, and I love you all. I'll remember this for the rest of my life. Regards, Kai. Well, thank you, Kai, for that just heartwarming and wonderful email. I think it's just about the most wonderful email we've ever received here, and it means so much to us. It means so much to, to Dr. Michael, who <clears throat> bared his soul at, at great risk, very fearful to do so at the Atlanta Intensive, and his self-disclosure just blew everybody's mind. It was one of the most dramatic live demonstrations ever. Although there have been a lot of fantastic ones, this one was right up, right up the, the, at the top. And it's amazing how when when you share the part of yourself you've been hiding from others in shame, you you open up. Suddenly, you it connects you to to the rest of, of, of humanity. Um, now, before we read uh, the, the problem for today that uh, Jacob is gonna help us with, uh, this is a special day for Jacob. It's your 41st birthday. Yes. And uh, Rhonda ha had a career as a professional <laughs> singer prior to becoming a, a psychologist. And, and I used to sing a lot. And, and when I was in Philadelphia, I would go up to New York and sing with the, uh, the opera there. And uh, uh, did, of course, many, many so solos. And so you're, you're about to be blessed with the most beautiful happy birthday ever, Jacob. You, you want to start us off? Okay, Rhonda? yes, talk about shame attacking. One, two, three, <laughs> happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. <laughs> happy, happy birthday, birthday to, you. to you. Happy birthday, birthday dear Jacob. Jacob. 
Happy birthday to you. And many more. Well, wow. oh. <laughs> thank you guys. I, I, you know, I hope I'm not exaggerating, but I would go so far as to say that's the best 41st birthday duet I have ever received. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Hands thank down. you. I think that you. accolade probably. <laughs> now we have a, a sad letter, uh, <laughs> a couple of them really from a uh, gentleman, David. Um, on on his shyness uh, to, to, to so let's read it to tell us what what okay. David had to say okay hi David I have seen the Facebook live video with Angela Crum on flirting and I love the role playing that you did I would really love to see more role playing because I'm trying to do the five secrets of communication but it seems like I can't do them in real life for lack of examples for a large part of my life I didn't really have a conversation with anyone. So maybe seeing in action a dynamic and a bit longer than the examples in the book, a dynamic conversation with the techniques could be very helpful for me. I am a very shy guy, 24 years old. I suffer social anxiety around people from my entire life, and I've never been on a date with a girl. Your books, your podcasts, and your Facebook broadcasts are really giving me hope for improving my situation, and I'm grateful for your work and the passion you put into it. With kindly and best regards, David. Well, how to have a, 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 a good dynamic conversation with a, uh, with a young lady, that could be w one thing on, on our plate. Read mm -hmm. his list of uh, negative uh, thoughts that he tells himself. Okay. These are some of the anxiety thoughts um, at the disclosure to random people on the street that I want to go to work abroad, but I'm too shy and I suffer from, from social anxiety. So thought number one. I will not be able to say what I want to say because of my anxiety. I will stumble on my words and an inconclusive thing will come out. The person will think that I'm completely crazy and I will frighten him or her with my behavior. Slow down because I'm writing them down. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, uh, I'll frighten the person or the person will two? The person will think I'm completely crazy mm -hmm. and I will frighten him or her with my behavior. Oh, okay. So if I approach someone on the street to have a conversation, they'll think I'm, cr I, I'm, I'm crazy and I'll frighten them. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Cause he is from Italy. So his English isn't, um, I'm kind of re editing the English as I'm, as I'm reading yeah. it. Maybe that's not correct, but it sounds like he wants to go to work abroad, but he's too shy and he wants to stop people on the street and share that with others as a way of getting over his social anxiety. Mm -hmm. So his second negative thought is, I will remember all the things that I've said wrongly in this exercise, and I will beat myself up over and over again. And this, yeah. I will waste the other person's time by saying these things. I should never waste time of other people. I'll, I'll, I'll waste. Uh, the, I'll, I'll waste their time. And I that should never. It. Yes, I'll waste other people's time, and I should never waste other people's time. Mm -hmm. If I stop a woman, she will think I'm crazy and creepy, and I, that I want to sexually assault her, and I'll scare her. If I stop a woman, she'll think I'm crazy and creepy, and she'll think I want to sexually assault her? Yes, and mm -hmm. I will scare her. Yeah. And the last one is the other person won't stop talking to me and go their own. The other person won't stop. They'll go their own way and pretend I don't exist. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Okay, great. Okay, I got those too. So um, it seems like a, one good starting place, uh, Jacob, might, well, any, dire any direction you want to uh, take it, um, but we could, at, at some point, we could l l practice, you know, kind of talk show host, how to make a, a conversation with strangers. Uh, 
uh, we could uh, talk, talk about, you know, like uh, flirting techniques and, and we could talk mm -hmm. about talking back to these thoughts, but uh, you, you had a story you wanted to share. And so we'll kind of put it in your hands right now and we're, we'll be your assistants. Sure. All that sounds great. Well, first I want to say thank you for those very kind words, David, at the beginning. That meant a lot to me. And I think if I know anything about shame attacking, all of it came from you. So you're amazing at modeling it. And I feel really privileged to have gotten to learn from you. Um, and I feel really happy to be here. This is a great way to spend my birthday. And I'm really honored that you guys are having me on the show. So thank you. Um, I also want to say I had the joy of listening to the podcast Matt did with you guys. And I watched the Facebook Live that Angela and Kyle did. And I think those are just outstanding. So I would say if people just watch those and listen to those, I think they will learn a ton about flirting and dating. And I might have a little bit to add, but I think those things are phenomenal and great um, resources. So I hope I can add a little bit, but I think those are phenomenal foundations. Um, yeah, so I have a story and I have permission to share this story. And I think it it illustrates a couple concepts that I'm happy to talk about today. Um, and I'm going to deliberately leave out this person's name um, for uh, privacy, but, um, and I'll give the PG-13 rated version. But uh, I was um, camping not too long ago uh, at a hot springs, and I met uh, an attractive woman and we struck up a conversation and it seemed to be going well. And I asked if I could take her out for dinner that night and she said, yes. And so um, we went out for dinner and they didn't have it, um, uh, any indoor seating. So uh, we got our food to go and we went to this park nearby and we sat in the park and um, we ate our dinner and um, having really good conversation. It was very like intimate and vulnerable and fun. And we seemed to be connecting really well. And then we moved to the grass and we were kind of sitting on the grass together. And then at one point I, I was getting some good, good vibes from her. And I said, um, would you like to kiss? And she said, uh, um, I don't know. And I said, oh, that's okay. You know, we definitely don't need to kiss. Uh, I can tell you're kind of ambivalent about it. She's like, yeah, there's this guy and he's kind of in my field and I don't know if it would be in alignment. I was like, yeah, that's totally okay. Not, not a problem. Um, and I just kind of backed off and we went back to talking and we were having some really good conversation. And then um, we were chatting for a while and then uh, Later, we were kind of sitting closer and closer to each other. And then I asked if I could put my hands on her knees while we were talking. And she said, yes. And then she put her hands on my hands. And um, things were getting kind of more um, intense. And then a few minutes later, I said, um, would you like to do some eye gazing? She said, yeah, I would like to do that. And um, Oh, and I had clarified a few minutes before that. I said, oh, are you in a monogamous relationship with someone? She's like, no, I'm not in a monogamous relationship with someone. I'm just, it's kind of uncertain what our connection is. It's like, okay. So I knew she didn't have any kind of agreements with anyone. But uh, so she said she wanted to do some eye gazing. So we, we did some eye gazing and I really started to fall for her. She's a really attractive woman and fearless and really just a, a wild human. And um, I was really liking her more and more with this eye gazing and then we started hugging and it was this very kind of connected sensual hugging and then we have, uh, jacob on more often i know my god <laughs> I, know. Awesome. I feel like i'm watching television <laughs> this is like i could just visualize everything you're talking about <laughs> but, and then all of a sudden this idea came to me and i said to her i said you know you should be careful because if you spend enough time with me you're going to want to kiss me. <laughs> and she paused and then she grabbed my face with her hands and just started making out with me. <laughs> and we had this very passionate kissing in the park and it was just really um, delightful. I thought, yes, I'm so happy this is happening right now. <laughs> um, and we ended up just having a really beautiful, sweet, connection and um 
she has invited me to come visit her in Hawaii. Um, she's really a, a fantastic woman. And um, I feel so grateful that the uh, that I got to have time to connect with her. And I think a couple um, points from the story are, um, one, um, I think it's always okay to ask for what you want. And if you get ambivalence, it's really great to kind of back off and take ambivalence as a no and not be pushy, not make the person explain their no, just kind of really back off. Um, and I think that thankfully worked well here. Um, and I kind of took a risk being playful with her saying, you know, you should be careful. You might want to kiss me. I personally like being playful in general. And I think that, um, being kind of silly and using humor can be helpful. And, um, yeah, so I feel, I feel fortunate that I had that, um, uh, encounter with this wonderful woman. Mm. I love that story Another for so many reasons. Yeah, one one other cool thing that you that you did. I'm sorry for interrupting you, Rhonda. I no have worries. To blurt it out because I'm so, I'm so elderly now that if I don't say <laughs> it right away, I can't remember what I was going to say, <laughs> which I probably can't remember now. But <laughs> what, 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 what another point uh, is, is that uh, when when you back off, uh, you don't want to do that in a pouty or sad or rejected way but but when yes you, you know like like you're you're threatened or that or that's terrible and and you you just did it in a really awesome smooth way kept, kept hang, hang, hanging in there and um also th this is kind of based on on the principle people never want what they can get they always want what they can't get and as she was ambivalent with you uh, you started to feel fall in, in love with, with, with her. <laughs> and then when you backed off, she, she started uh, coming and, and pursuing you. And totally. I think uh, understanding that dynamic is, is totally crucial to, uh, to, 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 to dating. Absolutely. What a beautiful, yes. beautiful story. Um, now that's kind of Wait, can I, let me, calculus. Let, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let me add uh, something to that. Only because, yeah. you know, you're kind of piggybacking on something really important that Matt said in the, in the, episode that we worked on with him about it's a really important to you know first kind of safety measures about dating to ask permission before you have physical contact with someone and so I love that you did that you know several times and um, it just feels it just feels so respectful to the other person Thank and you. Um, yeah I, I'm glad that you emphasize that and also takes tremendous courage it does to, 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 to ask. And, and th th this is something men are always obsessing about. Should I hold her hand? Should I put my arm around her, you know, a zillion, put my arm around her shoulder? Oh, what, what if, you know, blah, what if this, what, what if that? And uh, that's a simple solution just to, to a ask for what, what you want in a kind of a, a, a friendly, non-threatening, non-demanding. Yeah, way. thank that. you. And just to add on to that really briefly, I was, had a really nice walk with Matt and, and, I loved that podcast he did with you guys. And I, I think Matt talked about enthusiastic consent and I'm a huge fan of enthusiastic consent. And I would add on specifically enthusiastic verbal consent because I think an error that a lot of people can make, particularly men, is to try to read nonverbal cues from people and mind read and assume that they're correctly guessing what the person wants. And sometimes you might be right, but sometimes you might be wrong. And if you guess wrong, the stakes could be high and people could feel very violated. So I personally try to do as little mind reading as possible. And I just ask people with words, would you like to kiss? Would you enjoy a hug, et cetera, et cetera. And I think then it takes the mind reading out and then you can be really clear about what the person wants or doesn't want. So I think going for enthusiastic verbal consent is kind of the gold standard and something to, to aim for. That's that. That's well star, well stated. Now, you're a great uh, expert and genius in this whole area, and that's what you illustrated is like Mozart's, uh, <laughs> you know, the Mozart of flirting and dating and you know connecting with people. But let me come back to poor David, who doesn't even know how to talk to a stranger, much less a a, a young lady. And what what could we counsel him? He's just wanting to know how, how, do, how do I talk to people? Yeah, I have some thoughts. I mean, the, 
the most obvious answer for the thought, um, if I stop a woman, she will think I'm crazy and creepy and that I want to sexually assault her and I'll scare her. I would say, David, if you put on like a, like a black, like a stocking cap with holes in it for the eyes and the mouth and maybe kind of run up to a woman um, really quickly and, and, and then very loudly with a knife say like, in your hand. with a knife and say, hi, I'm here, to, I'm here for you. I'm here to get you. I think then you won't have to worry about kind of coming off creepy or crazy. No, don't 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 do that. Um, no, yeah, I think we, <laughs> I'm officially actually not saying that. Um, so yeah, I think um, well, one of I think one of the great points that David and Matt and and Angela and Kyle have made um, is that. Um, it's really important to practice talking to people over and over and over. Um, and, you know, David, we've talked about rejection training. So I think first, first of all, the mindset you bring is incredibly important. So I think David, I would recommend just prepare to strike out massively over and over again and see it as really learning opportunities. So particularly if you can strike out graciously and um, uh, in a way that, that isn't um, too upsetting to other people, you're going to get a lot more practice if you just kind of go up and start talking to people. Almost whatever you say is going to be better than not saying anything. What, one of my favorite quotes from Wayne Gretzky is, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And so at least for me, I'd much rather try with someone and fail, which I do regularly. You know, my story makes it sound like I'm so suave and amazing. I also have dozens of stories of just striking out, you know, really hard, <laughs> been rejected hundreds of times at this point. Um, so I'm happy to share those stories as well. So I think you just have to put in your dues and get rejected a lot to get desensitized to the fear of rejection. Um, and uh, in this area, one of the things is called the two second rule. And that's not referring to food that drops on the floor and the duration you have before you pick it up, you eat it. The two second rule is if you think about approaching someone you find attractive, within two seconds, you have to get up and start approaching them. And I, I sometimes use this rule on myself because otherwise I'm gonna chicken out and I'm gonna think about talking to someone, but I'll, I'll convince myself that I shouldn't and I'll kind of justify or rationalize why I shouldn't go talk to someone, but then the person might just leave and then you have no chance. So the two second rule is the moment you start thinking about talking to someone, you just walk up and start talking to them. And a really, a way to do that where you won't come off as creepy or scary is giving a compliment, which I know is something that, um, you know, Angela and, and Kyle and, and Matt did. And I'm going to add on to the compliment idea. If you really want to come off as not creepy, which I share as a value, I like to do what I call the consensual compliment. So the consensual compliment is where I walk up to someone and I say something like, would you enjoy a compliment or would you like a compliment? And if How I get about, would you mind if I give you a compliment? Would that work Or would too? you mind if I give you a compliment? That, that's no. okay too. Would you mind if I give you a compliment? Would you like a compliment? Would you enjoy a compliment? I think any of those are fine. And if the person expresses ambivalence, you can just back off. Or if they say, no, thanks. This actually just happened to me literally two hours ago. I walked up to someone and said, would you like a compliment? She said, uh, no, thanks. I said, no problem. Have a great day. And I just kept walking. So um, that way uh, you're very consensual about it. And then if, but if you get a clear yes, um, in fact, should we, people ask for more role-playing. Rhonda, would you like to role-play this with me? Sure. Could we, could we model a couple ways a consensual compliment can go? Okay. So this is, this um, is fantastic, Jacob. Okay, good, good. So Rhonda, feel free to either give me a clear yes, an ambivalent response. Actually, why don't we first model an ambivalent response? I'll show you how I would handle that. And then we, you know, we can also model a no, we can model any of these. So I might say something like, Rhonda, would you enjoy a compliment? Gee, I don't, I don't really know. I'm, I'm, I don't, it's kind of, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I like to be consensual with my compliments and it sounds like this might not be for you. So that's totally okay. We don't, we don't need to do that. Okay. Yeah. I think that's best. That sounds good. 
thanks for taking care of yourself. Have a good day. Yeah, have a good day. And I would just walk away. That's not creepy at all because I'm being really clear about what Rhonda wants. And when she didn't want that, I was like, no problem. Have a good one. Like David was talking about earlier, I was gracious about it. I wasn't pouty. I didn't complain. And then I would just kind of keep walking. And overall, that might still have been a positive interaction for that person because you modeled being consensual and you modeled that their opinion matters. And if they say they don't want something, you respect it. So Jacob, how do you feel when they how do you how do you feel in that moment when they say, gee, I don't know? I you know, I might feel maybe like a tiny twinge of rejection, but it's pretty small. I've I've done this hundreds of times now. So at this point, I'm pretty desensitized to it. And it's 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 not that it's not so bad. Okay. And rejection sometimes I feel practice, totally fine about it. Rejection practice re really helps. I think you you know, Jacob, that when I was a medical student, I went out with this younger guy who was a friend. He lived in the garage behind where I was sharing a house with a bunch of people. Jeff Evans was his name. He called himself Spider. And if you hear this <laughs> podcast, please contact me. I'd love to talk to you again. It's been like 40 years or more. But he's really a neat guy. And I skipped uh, medical school classes for two weeks. And he and I just <laughs> went out collecting rejections all day long. We went all over Palo yes. Alto, San Francisco. And we were both as nerdy as can be. So we got 100% rejection. <laughs> You know, we just, we thought you were supposed to be real sincere and nice. So we would go up and say, oh, oh, uh, my name's David. I'm, I'm a medical student. Could, could, could I have your phone number? No. <laughs> <laughs> and we found out that that approach wasn't very effective. We both got probably more than a hundred rejections each, but it, mm -hmm. we got o over it. You know, the world doesn't come to an end when, when you're rejection, when, when you're totally. Rejected. Oh. Exactly. And the more you practice it, the more you don't really care. And then it gives you the confidence to just walk up to anybody. Okay, so Rhonda, now let's try, let's spin it a little bit where you're ambivalent, but then wh when I respond, then be very interested. So let's okay. try it again. All right. Rhonda, would you like a compliment? Gee, I don't know. That feels a little weird and uncomfortable. Yeah, it sounds like maybe we shouldn't do that. I, I'd really only like to give you a compliment if you were really into it. Well, actually, the more you say it now, I kind of am into it. So, yeah. I Are you sure? It's totally yeah. optional. It's okay if you don't want one. No, I think I do. I can keep it to myself. You do? Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I wanted to say I really like your nails. <laughs> I was noticing the color of them, and I thought they were really pretty. Oh, nice. Thank you so much. Yeah, I did it You're myself. Welcome. Nice. And then could and you then, follow up that, yeah, Jacob, ahead. say with a proposal for marriage? You could. I, I, I think that might, be, that might be a little too slow. I probably just should have started with the proposal and skipped the compliment. But we, the it's, okay, it's okay to be patient sometimes. It's, it, you know, it's, it's okay to wait 10 or 30 seconds to propose to someone. Yeah. Oh. By, by the way, what, what's happening now? In that interaction between me and Jacob? The, among the three of us. Well, I'll say I'm, I'm, having, I'm having fun. I, I'm having fun. Yeah, we're having fun and, <laughs> yeah. and, and laughter. And if you can bring some lightheartedness, uh, now that may be hard if you're feeling frozen with shyness at first. But I, I think people really, uh, really appreciate a little uh, humor and light, lightheartedness and, 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 and warmth. Too. Yeah, That's sure. Beautiful, it, Jacob. Yeah. Thank you. In fact, I have a lot of really wonderful clients, particularly male clients, who are very kind and also very serious. Oh, and yeah. it can be quite hard for them to go up and talk to people and bring a playful attitude. So one thing I've started actually recommending to some of my clients is taking improv classes. Mm. I myself took an improv class at Facebook a few years ago, and it was one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life. I got oh, to- wow. I was the only non-Facebook person um, there and it was a bunch of brilliant, like 40 Facebook people. And we had so much fun doing skits and thinking on our feet. And there was, you know, no stakes. You could just mess up and fail. And it really helped us kind of think on our feet and be snappy and think outside the box. And I also just found it really fun. So I've started actually recommending improv. They even have online improv classes. I think BATS in San Francisco, B-A-T-S. Um, yeah, no, it's Heather Clegg runs one too. Classes. Berkeley Improv. Oh, Heather Clegg runs an improv class? Cool. Yeah, she does. At, it's at Berkeley Improv. Yeah, I think for people that find it challenging to think on their feet or be spontaneous, I think practice, practice, practice is great. And improv is a really fun way to practice that. 
And it's the kind of thing that I try to teach my patients, but it's hard to teach humor and it's hard to teach spontaneity, but I think improv classes are better at it than I am. And it, it's a fun way for people to start to develop that skill set. So we're saying that that's something that David might uh, want, want to do. Uh, totally. He's, he's listening to this podcast. I have a, a couple other things here that we can be doing, Jacob, and you probably have several things too. I, I always want to remind people who are shy of the power of self-disclosure, but it has to be done uh, proper properly, and and in this exercise, you you would agree to approach say five strangers a day for a week. Now it's harder yes. with shelter in place. We figure out how to do that, but let's just ignore that for the moment, and then we can figure out how to do it in, in the world of, of shelter in, in place. But but what you do, you see, the problem with shyness is shame, that, that it's not the shyness mm -hmm. per, per se, it's not an issue. It's only if you're you're ashamed of it and hiding it, that, that's what makes it toxic. And so uh, you can do a self-disclosure and you can walk up to a stranger and say something like, Let's, uh, could I just talk to you for, for a moment? Um, I, I, I want you to not know that I've been shy ever since I've been a little boy, and uh, I've, I'm, I'm afraid to talk to strangers, uh, I'm afraid to talk to women, uh, and it's been making me a little on the lonely side, and, and so, uh, but I've been so shy, I've been hiding it. And today I decided I'm not going to be sh uh, sh ashamed anymore. I'm just going to start telling uh, strangers uh, about it. And, and, that, and that's why uh, I, I decided to tell you. Mm. I love that. I love that too. I, I, what I like about it is it's authentic and um, it's vulnerable and it's not creepy. And I think many people would respond quite warmly to that. Yeah, and and in addition, the art the, there's an art form to it because if you say, oh, "I just want you to know I'm real shy," then they'll think you're pathetic <laughs> and they have to help you, and right. they'll say, "Well, have you tried this? Or here's a vitamin you might try, <laughs> or, you know, or, or don't think that way, or some lame thing like that." But when you say it the way I, I said it, then then the the other person is at ease; they're not being pre pressured uh, for, for anything at all. Um, now, how about yeah. uh, another t technique here? And then we want to do some externalization of voices with David's uh, negative sure. thoughts. But, um, you know, the, the, the talk show host, I modeled that for a fellow who's been shy all of his life uh, just uh, yesterday, actually, th in, in, uh, through a, a Zoom uh, chat. And, uh, and, and talk show host is, you see, shy people are always thinking, you know, I've got to impress the person with something about myself and, and they wouldn't be interested in me. And it's a very self-centered idea based yes. on the spotlight fallacy that you're in the spotlight like a performer and you've got to prove something or impress people. And that, that fails 100% <laughs> of the time because people don't care about you. They care about <laughs> right. themselves. And so when you go around trying to impress them with yourself, you'll just turn them off. But yes. people do care about themselves. And so a, a good... A, exercise you can practice this w w with a friend is is to use four of the five secrets of effective communication you can use the disarming technique find truth in what the other person is saying inquiry ask them questions thought and feeling empathy paraphrase their words acknowledge their their feelings and stroking tell them how how great they are and and in no particular order what you don't have to use is a lot of i statements where you're talking about your own feelings your own thoughts your own ideas right. your own activities and we can we can model that uh, right now if, if yeah that sounds great folks would like to do that um, so what, if, why don't we set it up like this this may or may not work but again Jacob you just play yourself and Rhonda you just play yourself and let's just say you're ha happening to, happening to be you know standing next to each other you know at a street corner or something and Jacob will uh, use the the talk show host. Te technique to, to see if he can draw draw you out. Uh, okay. Sure. And, and I had forgotten that I wanted to share this, but this is actually a good moment to share this. One thing that incorporates everything David's saying, it's a very confident opener. So you, if you're going to use this opener, you probably want to be feeling pretty confident. But um, I, I've done it a few times, and it's a really fun one where you can gather information about people. And uh, it, it, it is... Um, it does say competent, so I'll, I'll try modeling this. So I might say, uh, 
So Rhonda, you look pretty interesting. So what's oh. your story? Yeah, I don't really know how to even answer that question. Yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a broad question. What what would you like me to know about you? Um, I actually I'm just standing on the corner trying to go across the street because I want to go get a bagel. Yeah. So that would be like a fail. So I would probably <laughs> take that as like that opener just did not work well, and that's okay. Let me let me try a so maybe if we were opener. at a party instead of two people at okay, that yeah. might work at a party. I think that's true. That's true. Yeah. It, it would work better at a party or like if you're kind of like sitting. I I've been like sitting at a table with someone when a coffee shop was full, and I'm just sitting next to someone at a coffee shop. There, it might go better. So let's pretend we're at a corner. Um, there, I. Um, the, you know, that's harder if someone is actually getting ready to kind of leave in a moment. Could could we make it that we're at like a bus stop and the bus is going to come in like a few minutes? So yeah. it's slightly less time sensitive. I might say something like, so I, I know the bus is going to come in two or three minutes, but um, we, we have a moment. Um, I noticed uh, that I really liked your purse. Um, uh, no, I don't like that. I'm going to change it. I'm, I'm going I'm to model failing uh, on podcasts. Let's model success. <laughs> I, I noticed yeah. you're reading a book on, on astrophysics. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. I've always been fascinated w w with, with physics. Are, are you a physicist or are you just interested in physics? Oh, well, actually, I'm in graduate school. You, you did what? I'm in graduate school. In, in, in physics? Yes. That's incredible. Yeah, uh, I've always I had a roommate in college, Phil Allen, who was a physics major. I would have been if I had been smart enough, but I realized you know oh, I, you. my IQ wasn't that, that that high. Where do you where do you study physics? Oh, I'm at UC Berkeley. Oh my gosh, you must have like a 200 IQ or something <laughs> like that. I, I, I'm so in admiration of of really really brilliant people. T tell me, is there some particular area of physics you're going to be going into? Or? I'm going into string theory. Oh, that's supposed to be the most advanced area, <laughs> area of all. Can you uh, explain that to a, uh, someone at the kind of at the sixth grade level? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, how was that? That was way better. Uh, and, I like and that. Yeah, just you're really good at that, David. Just express a genuine interest in the other person. You, all these techniques can fail if you do them clumsily or in a pressured way. But if you can find just something genuinely interesting about the, the other person and ask about that, that's complimenting, uh, stroking, and, and, and inquiry. Uh, and it, it, ha it has to come from the heart. Another uh, another one that's really easy, but it's threatening is just smile and hello practice. Yes. How how would that work, Jacob? I love smile and hello practice. I I I use it as like the foundation of social anxiety training. So I have a lot of clients will kind of get out of the office, then we'll walk down the street, and we'll have them just smile and say hi to maybe the next ten strangers. Yeah. And right off the bat, then they learn how to make eye contact with people, which can be scary and how to smile and just begin that process of connecting with people. And even that can be quite scary for people when they start. But if you do it over and over and over, people get really comfortable with it. And then that's a great foundation for starting up a conversation with people. What would you say to a person like David? And this would be an assignment for you, David. We're mentioning these techniques so you can try, try them. And suppose David says, oh, I couldn't do that. That's too scary to well, smile and I say think, hello to strangers. I think I would say, David, it is very scary. You're right. It would be quite scary to go and talk to people. You know, Maybe you would prefer not to do this exercise and maybe not uh, talk to people or flirt with people. I would totally understand that. I, I do think that if you tried it and if you went out and forced yourself to look at people's eyes and just say hi, that it would get a lot easier with practice and eventually you could get really good at it and it wouldn't be so scary. But I can see why you wouldn't want to do it. It might, it might be too frightening. Yeah. I, I think I would say, say to him, uh, take it or leave it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a, this, that's a this lot is more not concise. a request. This is a demand. In fact, let's go out right now. 
and totally. do it together. And I've often yes. gone out doing this, you know, with with people who were, who, who were shy, because I got a lot of help from somebody who helped me when I was a totally gomer medical student. <laughs> and I found somebody who kind of taught me the ropes and hung out with me and showed me what to do. And it was very, 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 very helpful. Let, let, let could we see if we can, uh, uh, crush some of the, make sure, yeah that sounds great could i could i be david yes yeah and you want to be the negative uh, self or i'll the, be uh, i'll be i'll be the positive self the positive self and Rhonda and i will be the uh, the negative you want to start out or you want me to start out Rhonda? why don't you start out okay now this technique is called externalization of voices we've referred to it on the show but how it works is i'm going to be the negative voice in david's mind and David you're going to be the positive David and I'm going to attack David with his negative thoughts and but put him in the second person you I'll sound like another person but I'm actually you David I'm the negative you and I want to see if you can defeat me as the positive uh, David and when you're in the positive role you 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 can use self-defense and and just argue with the negative thought and say it's full of bs or you can use the acceptance paradox and, and defeat the negative thought by agreeing with it, with a sense of peace or a sense of humor, or, and, and, and you can do a combination of, of the two. So let's see how, how it goes. Uh, could I talk to you for a minute, uh, David? Sure. If you try to talk to a stranger on the street, uh, you're, you're gonna stumble and you're, you're, you won't talk clearly and and you're going to seem uh, p pretty foolish yeah you know i think that's entirely possible um particularly when i start doing it i probably will stumble and i probably will be kind of nervous and i i might even appear foolish sometimes and that's okay that that's how i'm going to learn to get more smooth with this and how to be less scared of it and if I practice this enough, I think I often won't look foolish. I think I'll, I'll be totally fine at it. And it's okay if, if I'm kind of bumbling around for a while. And that's just the price of learning something new. Great. Who won? Me. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? I'd say huge. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it was huge too. You, you, uh, and and you, you don't want to stop till you get to huge. If it wasn't at huge, we do row reversals until we got up to huge. Was that self-defense or the acceptance paradox? I think it was more acceptance. Yeah, right. Often that's the most powerful technique. Your turn, Rhonda. Okay. Um, David, you know, if you approach somebody, you're going to remember all the things that you said wrong, and you're going to beat yourself up over and over again. So why even try? Well, um, it's possible. I, I'm happy to acknowledge that it's possible that um, I won't remember what to do and I'll kind of mess up and and that's okay. And it's also possible that if I mess up, then I'll remember all, all the ways that I messed up. Um, that might actually be awesome. If I remembered all the ways that I messed up, then in the future, I can do it differently. And that can be a great form of learning to mess up. And I think that if I keep doing it enough, though, eventually I'll kind of sometimes do it successfully and I'll get more confident with it and I'll get less nervous over time. And every once in a while, I might actually be like really awesome at it and skillful and I'll be totally fine. Nice. And who won that? I think I did. I think so, too. Did you win small or large? I'd say large. Large or huge? I'd say huge. Yeah, I think so, too. I thought that was really beautiful. And was that also acceptance? I think that was like maybe a mix of acceptance and self-defense, like a lot, a lot of acceptance and maybe some self-defense. What do you think? That's what I think too. I think it was a great mix of both self-defense and acceptance. Okay, Thank my, you. I'm, my turn. I'm the negative David now. Okay. But uh, David, if you approach someone on the street and try to talk to them, they'll think you're completely crazy and you'll frighten them. Well, I think if I get down on all fours and I start barking like a dog or going, ah, 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 I probably will frighten a lot of people and, and they will think I'm crazy. So maybe I could stop doing that and I could instead um, just go up and, and give some nice consensual compliments to people or I could practice the talk show host technique or I could do 
the self-disclosure technique that David was modeling. And then I, I probably wouldn't come off at all as creepy and they wouldn't think I'm crazy. I bet they just think I'm a guy who wants to talk to them. Who won? I did. That's Peter's a huge. Mom. Yeah, huge. And the thing I would add to that is, is I think not only do I sell myself short with these thoughts, but I sell other people sh short. And I yeah. think people have a lot more love and compassion than I'm giving them uh, credit for. And maybe if I take some chances, I'll give people a chance to help me change my, my life. Uh, to, I like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so we could talk back to these these others. Uh, do you, the, the, let's the do one, that. The one that might be worth addressing is the um, I'll waste other I'll waste the other person's time. Do you want to, Do you want to hit me with that one? Well, why don't uh, let's do a role reversal here. Why don't you? Okay, that sounds Rhonda good. Rhonda, with, with you want to be the positive self? Yeah, I'll be. Yeah, uh, Rhonda, you want to be positive self or negative self? What would you like the best? I'll be um, positive self. Great. Okay, I'll be negative self. You know, David, um, you're going to waste the other person's time. You know, I might waste the other person's time. There are people who are probably really busy and they're rushing off to something. And if I stop and talk to them, um, they might be really annoyed and I could waste their time. And there might be other people who are interested in talking too and would enjoy a conversation. And I'll never know that if I don't try. Mm, nice. Who won that one? I think I won. Yeah. Big or small? I think I won. Big. Yeah, big or huge? Huge. I'd say huge. Yeah, it felt really I good. that was awesome. I, yeah, like I, thought so. I thought so too. A couple items of business before we close off here. Uh, could we, well, could we do the sexual assault fear and then stop? Oh, okay. Um, you, you be the positive, uh, uh, Rhonda. Um, actually, can I be the negative and attack uh, Jacob with this? Yeah, okay, sure. Hit me with it. Because I am a woman. Yeah. Okay. You know, David, if you, if you stop and talk to a woman, she's going to think she you're creepy and crazy and that you want to sexually assault her and you'll scare her. Um, you know, I'm happy to acknowledge that if I was really unskillful and having an off day that I could approach in a creepy way and she would think I'm going to sexually assault her. But I think most of the time, if I am respectful and if I'm thoughtful and if I talk to a woman in a way that's consensual and kind of lighthearted, uh, not only will she not think that I'm creepy and want to sexually assault her, but she'll actually, she might really enjoy the interaction and um, it could be really fun for her. So I'm doing a lot of mind reading to believe that every woman's going to think I'm going to sexually assault her. And, and in fact, I think probably very few women would think that um, if I do this thoughtfully. Mm, and who won that? I did. Mm, and big or small? Big. Big or huge? I'd say huge. I'd say that was like huge times a million. <laughs> Gargantuan. <laughs> Gargantuan. Yeah. Yeah, that was beautiful. Well said. Yeah, just, just a couple closing things here. Uh, one, you've been uh, very uh, humble and, and trying to be helpful in sharing your, 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 your genius. But uh, Jacob, you also have a book on depression that might be of uh, interest, particularly since it uh, focuses on uh, teenagers and, and, and adolescents. Could you just give us a little brief blurb about your book? And if people say have a, uh, know of a, a depressed teenager, uh, son or daughter, or, you know, a friend or, or daughter of a colleague or whatever, how, how might they, they find this uh, wonderful book you wrote called The Antidepressant Book, but it's not about antidepressants. Yeah, thank you, David. Yeah, the, the title is deliberately a little bit um, playful. The, the title is flirting with you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not at all about antidepressant drugs. Um, the idea, which I, I learned so many things from you, David, but including the idea that people have really good reasons uh, to stay depressed. And paradoxically, the more we celebrate, I mean, it sounds kind of crazy, but the more we celebrate all the wonderful things that someone's depression says about them and all the good reasons to stay depressed, the easier it is to let go of that depression. And the book is about a lot of different things that teenagers and adults can do to not be depressed anymore. 
including changing their thoughts, um, as well as a variety of habits and behaviors that people can do that can help them feel better. And it's on Amazon. And the name of the book again is? Uh, the Antidepressant Book, and a the Practical author, Guide it, for Teens and Young Adults to Overcome Depression and Stay Healthy by Jacob Towery. Uh, Jacob Towery. Okay. <laughs> now, the last thing is when we have awesome people like you on our show who obviously have a massive amount of experience and we're just hitting the tip of a huge iceberg here of all the skills that you have and all the kinds of problems you can help people with really quickly. And by the way, uh, our friend, I think it was Jeremy Carmel, uh, I, the, who might have said this, that your uh, ratings on, what's that thing where people can... <laughs> Is it Yelp? On Yelp are the Business? highest he's ever seen. So obviously you have a lot of people who have benefited from your wonderful work and are grateful. Thank you. Here in California, things are a little different from the rest of the world. And sometimes things have sticker shock and costs that can be totally shocking to people. And so, but at the same time, uh, I, I know that you have a, uh, a sliding fee scale too with a lot of resources for people who want and need help, who, who don't have the, uh, the, the means maybe to, to, to pay uh, what, what some Silicon Valley uh, entrepreneur would be able to pay. And so if someone has a uh, nose of a depressed teenager or young adult, adolescent or child, uh, what, how, how would they find out about your, uh, uh, you know, dis discounted r rates and so forth? Yeah, that's a great question, David. Yeah, it's true. I am extremely expensive by default. Um, and I also have a sliding scale clinic and I have a pro bono clinic. So in general, um, if people go to my website, there's a section called Prospective Patients. And if they go to that section, it will walk them through what to do next. And um, yeah, if people are interested in a sliding scale and they want to ask me about it, I'm happy to talk with them about if we would be a good fit for sliding scale. And it would depend on factors like how much um, availability I have and people's financial resources and things like that. But I do like to always have some people in my sliding scale clinic as well as doing some pro bono work. So people are always welcome to ask me about that. Thank you. It's been a joy having you on and uh, uh, it's your birthday, but you've really given a tremendous birthday gift to us and to the many, many people who will be uh, listening to this, th this podcast. We're up to Thanks to you fans, and uh, we're up to, you know, 130,000 downloads per, per month. So there'll be a lot of people will become familiar with, with you. And uh, our only marketing is you, our fans. We don't have any financial resources. This is all done on a volunteer basis. And so if, if you like our podcasts and, uh, you, and you have an, an, an emailing list, maybe you're a member of, so send the link to the, uh, the list of Feeling Good podcasts on my website or tell people about the podcast if you think they might like it. We, the letter from Kai was a man whose life was transformed dramatically just by listening to, you know, podcast 187 of, of a treatment of, of a, 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 a Dr. Michael who was suffering from crippling shyness and so much he, he was afraid even to interact with his sons. And he was so ashamed and so lonely and so down on himself and so hopeless. And he, he, he in one session, his life was, was transformed, more than transformed. His negative feelings disappeared and he went into a state of enlightenment. And when people listen to that, it rubs off on them too. And so, uh, so spread the word if you can about the Feeling Good podcast. And remember too, that my own book, uh, Feeling Great, just uh, came out on Amazon. It was released on sem September 15th. And so if you're curious about uh, all, all the new team therapy techniques, it's, it's directed to the general public as well as to therapists who want to learn about these, these new methods. And with that, I think it's sayonara. Is that right, Rhonda? Yes. I think people are going to be transformed by this podcast. So thank you so much, Jacob. It was really wonderful having you. And the oh, thank you guys for having me. I really enjoyed being here. 
and the practical thing is to use the techniques that we've modeled here, even if they freak you out, even if they're terrifying, you're gonna have to take that, that step and be willing to, to face your fears and face some rejection if you'd get, like to get out of that prison of social anxiety. I know I was personally crippled with five different forms of social anxiety in my life, so I've been there and I know, I know what it's like and I know how fantastic, fantastic it is when you, when you get out of your shell and, and start connecting with, with, with the world. So I hope many of you will have the courage to do some of the kinds of things we've, we, we've described. So hope, hope you're all feeling great. And thank you. And thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, David. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, guys. That was really fun. Yeah. Bye-bye. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes for this episode under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. The theme music is Gypsy Jazz in Paris, 1935, composed and performed by Brett Van Donsel. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.